Hi everyone, welcome to uh, Anthony's Hobby Corner. I hope you're staying safe. Um, on today's video, um, I'm going to be sharing with you the results of a simple project that I worked on uh, in the last couple of months, uh, which was to build uh, a custom throttle uh, for my layout. Uh, as you can see, um, I have um, three individual loops uh, on my layout uh, and um, so even though the loops are interconnected they're three separate loops um, and so I have the ability to run trains individual one on each loop or I can have a train traverse all three loops if required as well um, and so as a result uh, I needed to build my own custom throttle I didn't want to have three separate chunky commercial throttles sitting here um, and uh, I also felt that I've, I've looked at those commercial throttles and the circuitry really isn't very very clean um, and of good quality um, so I personally prefer to build a, my own throttle and so here it is it's basically a simple three channel uh, DC throttle uh, and so um, I've not only used a custom case I built my own faceplate um, and also designed the circuitry inside including uh, the individual throttles themselves as well. Uh, the control is a custom design and, uh, and a very simple with minimal components uh, and I'll, uh, the intent here is to remove it from here for a second, put it on a table here and uh, show you uh, the internals of it as well and how it functions. Hope you enjoy it. Alright, so here we are. I've disconnected the controller from the, uh, from the track, from the layout at least. And so you can have, can have a closer look at it. Uh, it's a very uh, small form factor. I tried to make it as condensed as possible. Um, and so um, let's start with the back. Um, so on the back here, uh, I've got uh, a power input for 16 volts, uh, up to 16 volts. You can actually even go more than that, but um, I have a 16 volt power supply. So I have a 16 volt input and here we have the outputs for each of the tracks, the controlled uh, throttle outputs for each of the tracks, the outer, middle, and inner. And I've got uh, cooling fans, mini cooling fans, uh, uh, placed in front of each of the power transistors. Now, to let you know, this is a complete overkill. It's not even required, uh, but I rather like to keep these transistors running cool. Uh, the junctions should be kept as cool as possible, so I like to keep a uh, a cool running uh, throttle box here so um, my next step is to actually have these fans turn on based on uh, on thermal uh, thermal conductivity so um, based on temperature uh, sensing so I'm going to put a little circuit for that later on uh, but for now they just come on as you turn on the power they all just turn on to keep the transistors cool um, the circuitry inside that I've built can handle up to uh, each of the throttles can handle up to 15 amperes a peak um, and um, but I know we're going to get close to that even collectively um, with, within all three throttles um, I'm feeding a four and a half amp power into this one so bottom line is I'm not extracting more than four and a half amps between all three of them or even an amp and a half from each of them so nowadays most modern DC or DCC locomotives um, they they run they run so efficiently that you can there's no way I'm going to max out even get close to maxing out the capabilities of each of these throttles. All right, so on the front, uh, the layout that I set up here basically uh, is that um, I've got my track selectors here. So I've got the in track number one, which is the outer track, and track number two, which is the middle track, and track number three, which is the inner track. And each of these tracks can pick which controller it wants to run off. Um, as you as you can imagine, there'll be times when I'll have two of the circuits connected together, and I have a locomotive going from one circuit to the to the other. And so you'd want to have two circuits controlled by one controller. Right? And there are times when you want to have each individual controller controlling individual circuits. So I'm going to power it up right now. I'm going to put some feed some power onto this one here. Um, and uh, you can see the lights come on here the red green and red blue and green um, and so what these lights indicate is which track sorry which controller the track is assigned to right so right now i have 
this track number one is assigned to controller that's red or controller one um, and uh, this se second track is assigned to the blue controller which is controller number two and the third track is currently assigned to the third controller which is controller number three um, these indicators are for your direction of, of power um, so that's uh, blue is one direction and then red orange is the other direction right so here's a directional switch here for the throttles uh, and each of the throttles actually have um, a direction light um, accordingly as well so um, the beauty about this here is that um, I can I can for example have both these tracks run off the blue controller by just switching this one on over to the blue and you can see this one as a switch the light changes blue I have a little relay board at the back uh, that then transfers this tracks contacts over to this controller um, and vice versa so I can actually connect even have this track run off the green controller and they're completely independently uh, change you can change them independently from which track that you want um, it's a complete independent selectors so I typically like to keep them as in one green one the blue and one red reason I have the color coding here as well is because when you're operating trains the last thing you want to be doing is trying to read which track you're on and then figure out what which controller you have the first and second and third you want to be able to at a glance know which controller is controlling which track and that's why I use the color coding here with the color coding I put on, on the faceplate uh, so that I could easily um, easily um, gauge that uh, and identify the controller um, um, very quickly so that's as simple as it is um, I'm going to basically open it up now and show the insides of it uh, and you'll see the uh, the circuit design uh, it looks fairly uh, uh, like a bird's nest, but it's not very clean. But uh, either way, I'll um, can I explain to you what I've done in, on the inside as well. All right, so let's open up the uh, the controller and take a look at the inside. There we go. So. Again, it's very compact. I try to squeeze everything in as much as possible. Um, but uh, what I wanted to really show you here is the three controllers. Um, here, These are the DC controllers. Uh, there's one for each channel, as you can see here. I'm hoping it's somewhat visible. Uh, these are custom designed controllers, right from scratch, uh, fully DC linear. These little uh, throttles here are uh, using a 2N3904 driver transistor uh, connecting to a uh, 2N3055 power transistor. So um, again, the mi very minimal bleed current um, and, uh, uh, and a very good true linear response. Um, I went completely analog on this design. The reason why is because I wanted to avoid any kind of hums and noises and, uh, and interference that would come with, uh, with any, any kind of digital uh, components in here. Now, most people would say you might as well, you can easily build yourself a throttle using uh, an Arduino, Arduino uh, um, uh, and uh, various shields connected to Arduino and, and so on and so forth. Um, but I wanted to go completely somewhat old school with this one because I wanted to keep it purely analog uh, with uh, no digital interference whatsoever, no clock pulses. Uh, etc um, and so um, so here it is very simple very simple design there is a throttle board uh, for the first controller and I designed that board as well uh, if you actually want um, want a copy of the schematic uh, the schematic uh, of this particular throttle that I've designed I'm you're more than welcome to send me a uh, send me a note and I'll uh, be glad to share that with you um, and I also made this custom boards uh, as well. So uh, if you're interested, you can let me know and I can uh, I can actually um, uh, Share with you how I got those built those boards and so on uh, And I do have some extra boards as well if anyone's interested um, And so each of these throttles control are for um, For one channel or one circuit. I've got a little buck converter in the corner here You may, may or may not be able to see it 
uh, and that's to to run, to run all the uh, lighting inside the inside this uh, inside the throttle. Um, it felt to be easier just to make sure I have a, a lower controlled voltage that just for powering the lighting and the accessories and the selectors. Um, back here is a relay based logic board. Um, I was going to go with a digital logic board maybe next time, but uh, uh, for now I think uh, the relays work very well. Um, I can handle up to um, six amps uh, on each each uh, loop if required through these relays. Um, so very simple circuit and of course the power transistors are fed through here uh, onto the back and as you can see them right now hopefully have a glimpse of them. These are 2N3055 power transistors uh, and they can handle a peak of 15 amps uh, I believe uh, uh, collector current. Uh, both of these are uh, NPN um, transistors that I'm using. Um, and in here I've also built into my throttle um, back EMF protection uh, into uh, to pr pr protect the transistors from getting any damage from back EMF from the uh, uh, from the motors uh, just in case. Uh, and so uh, the only thing I didn't incorporate in here was short circuit protection. Uh, but basically, given the currents I'm running through here, uh, the collector current on these transistors are up to 15 amps and I'm only running four and a half amps There's no way I'm gonna damage it. But either way um, I will perhaps have a secondary uh, short circuit protection if required, but uh, For now, I just have back EMF protection on each of these controllers So there you go. That's the internal guts of it. It looks kind of uh, intimidating, but it really isn't. It's very fairly straightforward um, It would be much simpler if I built a custom board for the logic board as well a custom PCB, which I didn't uh, in hindsight, I perhaps should have built a custom PCB for the logic board. It would have, re would have reduced all these wires. Uh, a good chunk of these wires would have been eliminated because of, of that, but uh, uh, perhaps next time. Um, but I did go down the custom PCB routes for the uh, for the throttles, um, and I think they turned out pretty well. That's the, uh, that's the quick overview of this throttle. I hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions, um, please don't hesitate to uh, to send to ask and send them through the comments, and I'll be more than happy to uh, provide any answers as possible. Um, if you're also interested in the DC DC controller that I have in here that was uh, custom designed, um, I'm more than willing to share that with you as well. Uh, here is a copy of my here's the extra PC boards that I also uh, got cre uh, got made custom made for me. Uh, this is what you see inside the controller here. Um, this is a fairly small form factor based on my design. It's about an inch by two and a half inches. Uh, and so when this circuit was designed, um, I made sure that I used uh, the most cost effective components possible um, so that this, this throttle becomes, you know, um, affordable for anyone to build uh, very easily. Um, rather than spending a lot of money on these commercial products, which are I don't believe are even as 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 good as some of these custom built products, um, this one uses two NPN transistors. It's got a driver transistor and a, and a power transistor. Uh, they are matched appropriately for um, base and collector current gains. Um, and I also built in a uh, back EMF protection as well to make sure that whenever your locomotives are under high load, uh, you don't have a high back EMF that would destroy your power transistor. Um, I just, just destroy the junction of the power transistor. Um, so um, again, it's a very small form factor, uh, very cost effective. Uh, the components in here collectively uh, would, wouldn't cost more than $15 Canadian, uh, if, if at all. Um, and um, and it's really you know, two transistors, a uh, couple of resistors, uh, potentiometer, and a couple of diodes, and you got yourself a, a DC, a true linear DC throttle. Uh, the linear response on this is is, is very uh, is very good, uh, a very uh, a very good linear response actually throughout the entire voltage spectrum, uh, and so that it responds very well for your locomotives. Again, simple and small.
um, if any of you are interested in uh, in this design or the boards or the circuitry uh, give me a shout um, on my uh, on my YouTube channel or on my or through my Facebook uh, channel as well and I'll be more than happy to respond back to you uh, with any questions you may have pertaining to this type of a throttle now uh, I do have a few more boards as, of these as well available if you're interested now, just as a little hint, I do have another video coming up soon. Um, I've already built, uh, um, at least on the test bench, a second generation of my throttle. Uh, and that second generation throttle uh, will include momentum. Uh, this one, I kept it pure. There's no momentum on this one. Um, I'm not a big fan of momentum myself, and so that's why I didn't really want one at this point. Uh, but just for the heck of it, I decided to design one with momentum as well. Uh, and so just stay tuned for that video. Uh, that Momentum Throttle will have more features than what's been available on your commercially available uh, Mo Momentum DC uh, throttles. Um, for example, on this throttle that I'm designing, uh, it will actually have uh, the ability to change the rate of increase of momentum uh, on the fly with a separate, uh, a separate uh, control knob. And you can also change the rate of decrease of momentum as well. So that comes in handy, especially when you have various different locomotives and they all respond differently to the momentum settings that you have. You can actually custom calibrate on the fly uh, uh, to make the momentum respond more realistically with those locomotives. Uh, in any case, stay tuned for that. Um, I don't want to uh, go too much into that yet. Uh, once I have the uh, uh, the boards built and the uh, the sample throttle built, I will have a video on that and share that with you. Um, but just a little teaser for next time. But um, again, here it is. Just want to make sure I share that with you. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, by all means, please uh, please don't hesitate to give me a shout, uh, and I'll be more than happy to respond to you. Thanks again for watching. Take care.